When I ask UX people who practice user research what is their biggest challenge, I often hear how hard it is to engage stakeholders with research. What are your thoughts on this topic? Well, I agree with that, but I think we also have a few tools in our toolbox that we can use to um, that we can use to engage our users. And I must say, I see the stakeholders <coughs> and the developers as our users, not so much the end users. Um, the tool that I have found most rewarding in uh, engaging stakeholders is to ask them to witness usability tests. And not just do that, but after the last usability test, get them all together in a room and then have them tell me what it is that they observed. Because this establishes ownership of the results. It's not just a weird guy coming in from the outside who uh, uh, tells them what their usability problems are, but it is themselves who find out. And every time I do this, and I use a method called the KJ method, uh, I am surprised at how many of the things that they have seen, that I have also seen. It is rare that I have to add anything. And I think this is a very important way for engaging stakeholders, making them feel ownership of the results. What would you recommend to in-house UX researchers who are always trying to identify opportunities for effective research if they want to better identify such opportunities? I'm not sure I have a, I have a good answer for that. But it is important, that's not directly answering your question, but it is important for usability professionals to constantly inform their stakeholders of what it is that they are doing, uh, to send reports, uh, not reports, but to send, send short notices of successes that they have had, of things they have accomplished, just to justify their existence and tell their users some of the things that they are actually accomplishing. What do you answer to stakeholders who tell you that five participants are not enough? Mm -hmm. Well, five participants, in my opinion, are enough to drive a useful cycle. Uh, I would probably turn the question around and ask them what it is that they want to accomplish. And um, if they then say, we want to find all the problems, then I would tell them that based on my research, that is simply not possible. It would require an enormous uh, amount of test participants in the hundreds, and it would require a large number of independent moderators, because we do not only have to have more uh, users in for testing, we would also have to have more moderators to do the tests. To put it differently, you could say that the perfect is the enemy of the good, and usually you get good or even excellent results by testing five users, implementing the results, then testing another five users if you've got time and resources remaining, and continuing that way until you have to ship or until it's too late to do anything about the product. But of course, if they insist that they want to have more than five users, I, as an independent consultant, am more than happy to do it. But usually, after they have seen the sixth or seventh or eighth user, and I tell them, and they can see with their own eyes, that unless we vary the task or vary the moderator, nothing new is coming out of it, then they slowly start to realize that maybe they could spend their money, their resources, in a better way. UX researchers sometimes experience a tension between conducting research they were asked to do by their stakeholders versus research they were not asked to do but think they should do. What are your thoughts on balancing this tension? I haven't really experienced that myself because when I'm called in as a consultant, they very often have a reasonable idea of what I should do and I wouldn't take the assignment if I didn't basically agree with what it is that they're asking me to do. If I was employed somewhere, then I would say that it's my duty as an employee to do whatever they ask me to do. 
but I would still, of course, point out what my recommendation was. And if they then said, yes, we hear you clearly, we understand what it is that you are saying, you are saying it in a loud and usable way, and they still insist that I should do what displeases me a little bit, then I guess I would do it. And if it happened again and again and again over a couple of years, I'd probably start looking for another job. Can you tell me a story about a difficult stakeholder who did not understand or respect UX research? Well, again, I'm an independent consultant, so it is not so often that I can follow up on the results that I actually do. In most cases, when I'm done with a project, they are enthusiastic and they, in most cases, they can't, they say that they can't wait to implement the results that I've come up with. In practice, whenever I do what perhaps I shouldn't do and go back to the website or to the product one year later, I often find that many of my recommendations have not been implemented. Now, I think this points back, this points two ways. You could say that the client has not understood fully or that they are not aware of usability findings. But in some cases, it actually points back to myself. Maybe I've not been usable enough in communicating the results. So in some cases, I've taken this as a learning opportunity to try to figure out, was there something that I could have done even better? Do you get but back to these, to these customers and talk to them about, about this? I should do that, but okay. in all honesty, I must say it happens most often when I get a follow-up project. Okay. And um, during the follow-up projects, I often go in and I have an opportunity to see what happens since what happened since the previous test that I was doing. Many UX practitioners are always looking for creative deliverables that engage their stakeholders with research findings. What are some deliverables you found to be working well for you? I haven't experimented very much with the format of my deliverables. I'm probably rather old-fashioned these days. I still deliver traditional A4 or letter-type uh, format reports, uh, not on paper anymore, but uh, by email, where I find more and more of my colleagues delivering very short uh, usability uh, test reports uh, in uh, PowerPoint formats with call-outs and so on. But I guess I'm a bit conservative and still stick to the traditional, highly usable report format that I've developed over the years. And even in cases where after a KJ meeting, after a consensus building meeting, uh, we have actually agreed what should be done. I always insist on writing a traditional report because it often turns out that half a year later or one year later or in case someone else takes over my work or there's a question about it, I find it immensely useful that there's a documentation of the things we found. So I think that the eight to ten hours that I use to write a good old-fashioned traditional usability test report are well spent. And until now, no client has been able to talk me out of that. Some UX research uh, practitioners believe that they should only provide findings and never offer recommendations following UX studies. They let their teams figure out what needs to be done by themselves, believing that this way these teams are more committed to act upon research. You mentioned that you're using the, the KJ techniques, uh, technique earlier. What are your thoughts on this approach? I try to always uh, include recommendations in my report unless the client explicitly tells me not to, and I don't recall that I've ever had a situation like that. My feeling is that when my clients hire me, they also hire me because they want me to provide an example of, a, of how a particular problem could be solved, and I explicitly say, that they provide, uh, that they want an example of it, how, how it could be done. And this example goes, uh, I always take great care to make it clear that this is just one of many ways of solving the usability problem. 
I think the example is helpful in several ways. First of all, it describes a potential solution to the problem, but second, it also describes, it also helps to further understand, it helps readers to further understand the usability finding. If you just have a usability finding, that can be hard or easy to understand. If you have a usability finding and a recommendation for improvement, that helps you understand much better what the usability finding is about. I do admit, and I'm perfectly aware, that there are problems of such size and such magnitude that you cannot easily describe a solution in a usability test report. But I would say that I usually rate problems on a three-point usability uh, severity scale, minor problems, serious problems, and critical problems. And it is usually my goal to provide an example of a, recomm a sample recommendation for at least the serious and the critical issues. If you want to know more about my views on recommendations, I've written a paper, uh, Recommendations on Recommendations, together with several other good people, uh, which appeared in US ma UX Magazine. We strive to make that paper extremely usable. It is short, it is uh, uh, down to earth, filled with down to earth advice uh, about how to make your recommendations both useful and usable. So I strongly recommend if you want to know more about my views and, and get some actionable things that you can do, some actionable advice about what you can do to improve your recommendations, go back and read that article. As far as I remember, it's only four pages, so it doesn't take forever to read it. It may actually take even longer to find it, to get a copy of it, but just contact me if you want a copy of that paper. How can UX practitioners tell if their stakeholders are bought into research? If they are... Bought into research. Or if they are bought into research. I would say they are bought into research if they come back. If they come back and ask you for more. Or if they respond favorably to some of your suggestions for additional activities that could be done. But it is your job as a practitioner to inform them of the options that are available. They are not usability experts. It is your job as a usability expert to make sure that you explain to them in a, use, in a usable and useful way what options are available in your toolbox and what you can do for them. Don't expect them to come to you and say, shouldn't we build some personas? Just to take an example, it's up to you to sell the personas to them in a way so they just uh, so they feel that this is worthwhile and of course in doing that you need to speak their you need to speak their language you need to explain it in terms that they understand so you need to speak in terms of return on investment marketing value bottom lines and so on and so forth these are all the questions I had for you. Is there anything else you would like to add about this topic? You mean about the topic? The topic of, of engaging stakeholders with Of research. engaging stakeholders. The one single, uh, this is repeating myself a little bit. I, I would say, well, yeah, I, I would say that there are two final messages. The first one is to make it their baby, to involve them actively in the studies that you are conducting. Do not make it a one-way com communication where you are telling them everything that you want to do. Involve them actively, starting from the moment where you plan the study. Talk to them. Maybe they won't listen, but that's fair enough. But give them a chance to comment actively on uh, what it is that you plan to do. Involve them in the task creation. Involve them in... Uh, setting up the user profiles so they won't come afterwards and tell you everything was wrong. The tasks were wrong, the users were wrong, the whole setup was wrong. During the test, make it extremely easy to, for them to observe what it is that you're doing if you're doing usability testing. 
run, t run tests at times that are convenient for them to observe. Let them talk to the users after the test. Of course, with you present, so they don't start telling the users that they uh, didn't understand one bit of it or start explaining all how easy it actually was to carry out the tasks that they were struggling with. So that's number one. Advice number one, engage your users. Make it their baby. Advice number two is swallow your own medicine. Eat your own dog food. You are preaching usability. That's very important. Or you, you are preaching usability. It is very important that you also practice usability. You must be a good ambassador for usability by ensuring that all of your presentations, all of your writings, all of your reports, all of your communication is highly usable. And that you, of course, listen carefully to any criticism that might come, that might come from the others. I've seen many usability professionals who just dismiss criticism with the word that, oh, they're not interested in usability. That has happened to me a few times. And almost every time I went back and looked at myself in the mirror, I found that I had a problem. They were not out to hurt me. They were not after usability. They were not uh, uh, enemies of usability. They actually had a message that they wanted to communicate back to me. All right. Thank you very much. Okay.